Okay, in this lesson we're going to learn how to graph a quadratic function. Um, and we're going to go through a lot of steps here. And we're going to do the first one here um, in the video, and then we'll do the second one in class together and talk about it. Um, but I want us to get some definitions out of the way. The good news about this is that your calculator is going to be a really essential and important tool or useful tool um, that can help us do that. But we, we have to understand the basics first. So make sure you write down your essential question and um, set up your notes. Okay, so first let's talk about, I'm trying to make this a little bit bigger, let's talk about some of this vocabulary. Um, the first thing that I want you to know is the word parabola, not a parabola, a parabola. And a parabola is what we call the graph of a quadratic function. It is a U-shaped graph. It is U-shaped. And I do want you to know that the graph could open up or it could open down. And we've already seen graphs like this, so it shouldn't be something totally foreign to us. And then another thing that's really important to know about a parabola is that it is symmetrical. Okay, and that's going to be a really useful tool, knowing that it's symmetrical. Okay, and so because it's symmetrical, we do have something called the axis of symmetry. Again, another very important vocabulary. The axis of symmetry is a vertical line that divides the parabola in half. That divides the parabola in half. And so because it is a vertical line, it's a linear line, um, we know the equations of vertical linear lines are x equals lines, and we have a little equation or formula. So the axis of symmetry formula is x equals negative b over 2a. So this is a really important formula that we need to know. At any point, you need to stop the video to get everything written down. Please make sure you do that. Then on our graph, another important thing that we have is the vertex. The vertex is the highest or lowest point on a graph. Just like the vertex of a mountain or the peak of a mountain or the peak or vertex of a valley. It's the highest or lowest point on the graph and something important to know that about the um, vertex is that it is on the axis of symmetry. I'm abbreviating it there, the AOS. It is on the axis of symmetry. So those two things are related. Okay, some of the critical attributes or things we refer to, and especially when we talk about the vertex, is we talk about does the graph have a minimum or maximum? And so just to specify, this is talking about the highest or lowest, not necessarily the high, not the highest or lowest point, but specifically the highest or lowest y value. Okay, like what is the highest feet on our mountain? How tall is it? So when they ask what is the minimum or what is the maximum, we would be referring to the y value. Okay, so one last thing that I don't, didn't write down on here is I didn't write down standard form of a quadratic. Now we know from polynomials that standard form is in descending order, okay? But what I didn't give you is I didn't give you the variables when we talked about that. So standard form would be ax squared plus bx plus c. So notice it's in descending order. The a, b, and c would be your numbers, your coefficients or your constant terms. Okay, so when we're going to graph a quadratic function, the first thing we need to do is identify the axis of symmetry. Now what might be useful too is to go ahead and identify our A, B, and C values. So if we look at our example, our A value would be 2, the B value would be negative 8, and the C value would be 6. Okay. 
So remember, when we do the axis of symmetry, we're going to use our formula that we just wrote down right here. So we're going to fill it in, and we're going to say x equals negative, because that's part of the formula, b, and in this case our b is negative 8, divided by 2 times the a value. And so this would be positive 8 over 4, which is 2. So our axis of symmetry is x equals 2. And we talked about that this is a vertical line. So now I'm going to come over to my graph, and I'm going to find where x is 2, and I'm just going to draw a dotted line to represent this because it's really not part of the parabola, but it's a tool that we need to know where it is. Okay, the next step says to find the vertex. This is really important because we have to know how tall to draw our parabola or how low to draw it. And I told you that our vertex is on the axis of symmetry. Well, if we know the axis of symmetry is x equals 2, then all we have to do is plug it in for x and find our y value. So the vertex is going to be a point, and so we're going to use that axis of symmetry and plug it in. Now here's the cool thing where your calculator could come in handy. If you know the axis of symmetry is at 2, all you have to do is look at your table of values, and you can help um, calculate that or determine the value. Okay, so I'm just showing you my calculations. This would be 8 minus 16, which is negative 8 plus 6, which is negative 2. So our y value is negative 2, and our x, and I'm sorry, yeah, and our x value is 2. So our vertex is 2, negative 2. So here's my vertex. That's really important. Okay, the next thing is our y-intercept. And what I'm going to tell you the really cool thing is, is all we have to do is look at the equation or the function. Our y-intercept is the c value. Well, what was my c value? It was 6. So my y-intercept is 0, 6. Okay, so there's my y-intercept. Now, at this point, we want to find some symmetrical points. So if I know this is the center of my parabola, and I know that I have the point right here, do you see how this is two units away? from my axis of symmetry. So now I'm going to go two units the other way, and here's a symmetrical point. At that point, we could kind of draw a sketch of our graph. But I want you to notice that the next critical attribute it asks us to find are x-intercepts or zeros. Again, this would be a place where our calculator would be a really useful tool. Now your parabola, you're going to think it goes wide, but you can see how narrow this is. If I start extending my graph, it's just going to, to barely increase. And so we might be able to guess that one of our x-intercepts would be there at 3, and then our other x-intercept would be there at 1. And we could check that with a calculator, and we're going to learn other ways that we can determine our intercepts as well. Um, but we're going to see, we would see that our x-intercepts are 1 and 3. Now you can see we have a picture of our graph. We've got our parabola. It's drawn. Now let's go through and kind of talk about some of these other critical attributes. So the next one is minimum or maximum. So what do you think? If our graph is opening up, do we have a minimum point or a maximum point? I hope you realize that we have a minimum point because this is opening up, so this is the lowest point we're going to have. Remember, I told you that the minimum point is your y value, or your minimum value, so y value. So we're at negative 2, so we, if we asked what is the minimum value, you would tell me negative 2. The domain, it's describing all of our x values. Our graph is going to continue going, and it's going to increase slowly. I'm trying to show you with my hands. It's going to continue to go out and out and out very slowly, but it's going to continue, and so it's going to include all of these x values. And so 99% of the time, unless we have two distinct endpoints, we're going to say that our quadratic, whether it opens up or down, that the domain is all real numbers, because it's going to be every x value. 
Okay, and then the last one is our range. Remember, range describes our y value. Well, here's our lowest, and then it's going up from here. So our y values, we already said that our minimum was negative 2. Our y values are going to be greater than or equal to negative 2. Okay? So that's all I want to talk about for there. We'll do the other um, function together tomorrow, but that will give us a starting point um, to, 